Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here. Now you might ask Patrick, what is this thing? And that's a great question because on the front of this, it says it's a B-Link. And if you actually look at the model name, it says it's a GTR5, but it doesn't say GTR5 on it. Instead, it says GR9, which is one of the most bizarro branding things, but it's not the only one in this system. This system, as you can tell, is super small, and it's actually been one of my absolute favorites. In fact, this image that you may have already seen, this we actually took at the Newark Liberty Airport because I was taking this in my just camera bag all the time because it was so small was able to just go and hook this thing up and actually go edit photos and stuff like that for the STH main site. You just hook it up to a display in hotels or wherever. It was super easy to go do. And uh, the fact that it's so small means that it fits in a backpack absolutely no problem. And this is not something that fits in a backpack because it's not powerful. This thing has an eight core Ryzen processor. It has 32 gigabytes of memory, a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD and room to expand beyond that and uh, it's still in this little tiny package. Oh, and by the way, it has some pretty awesome networking as well. So this is part of our mini PC series, and I can't wait to get to show you this unit because even though it's not the best unit that we've looked at, it's also become one of my absolute favorites. So in terms of pricing on this, pricing definitely varies. If you see a uh, kind of, sometimes you'll see this thing is about $900. Sometimes uh, we just actually saw, just before making this video go live, we saw that this thing had a flash deal on Amazon. I think it was like $760. 64 bucks or something like that. So there are coupons on this thing. It goes on sale. I mean, the, the, the range I'm pricing in this thing is actually pretty wild. Um, but especially in the, if it's around $800, I think that this thing is actually absolutely awesome at that price range. Once you start getting into the higher price range, like once you get closer to a thousand dollars, I think that there are other options in the market that I probably would start to look at, but around $800, I think this is actually a pretty darn good value. And if you do want to go see the current pricing of this, you can go just go check the Amazon link down below. It's going to be an affiliate link because you know, we buy these units, so hopefully we make some money on and actually be able to pay for them. But there's an affiliate link down below if you wanna go and check out the current pricing on Amazon. The first thing that we're gonna do though, is we're gonna go look at the system and go check out all the really cool things that are in it. Okay, on the front of the system, you're gonna see some fairly standard features and some things that are just totally different as well. So first thing, standard, you get a power button. Sure, love it. You also get two USB ports. One is a USB 3 and that's a type A port. You also get a type C port. I really wish that these things started coming with like the higher speed USB Cs and stuff like that because you know if you look at the Project Tiny Mini Micro series that we do with Lenovo, HP, and Dell systems, they're one liter PCs. Those are starting to come with like USB 20 gigabit per second ports and stuff like that. And I just kind of feel like it would be cool if we had that kind of port, you know, speed for USB on these. It would just be nice. The other feature that we have, which is pretty standard, is that we have a headset jack on the front. Cool. There are things though that are definitely different and let's get to those next. First, there's this big green clear CMOS button, um, which you'd basically never see on most systems. The other thing is a little more subtle, but you're gonna see them on both sides of this. This actually has two microphones that are built in because this has a lot more features that I guess are more like, like kind of nicer PCs or laptops or something like that. And so having not just one little microphone, but two little microphones helps you do things like, you know, be able to do noise canceling and stuff like that if your software supports it. All right, so let's get to the back of the system. First, we have our power input, which is just a DC power input, pretty simple there. Then we also get USB, so we get two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports, also cool. We get an HDMI and a display port output, so we get both, uh, you know, so if you want on two monitors, absolutely no problem off the back. But let's get to the networking because that's one of the, probably the most exciting things about this. You have two network ports. Now this is a feature that a ton of people ask for. They're always asking like, hey, how do we get more than one network port, especially on Tiny Mini Micro where you normally just get one one gigabit port. You actually get two, and these aren't just one gigabit ports, these are two and a half gig Realtek NIC ports. So these are not the I225 B3 stepping, but on the other hand, these are Realtek and you do get two and a half gig ethernet on them and you get two of them in a tiny little package like this absolutely awesome. And just because it has two, two and a half gig network ports, that's not the only networking in the system. You also get Wi-Fi that we'll see when we get inside. But before we get inside, we took a look at a couple little things on the system. And the first thing I just wanna show you real quick is the fact that you can see there's the B-Link logo here and you might be able to see and just make out the fact that it says AMD. Well, this AMD, we'll show you this when we go plug it in. We're actually gonna do, you know, show you the uh, noise and stuff like that. And when we do that, we'll plug this in. You know, you, you actually see that this AMD portion, this little AMD logo, 
it lights up. So this is actually kind of like one of the weirder things because on this system, you know, normally when a, you have a system like OEM, they're always like trying to like flash their names out there, right? You'd expect like the B-Link to light up and have bells and whistles and whatever. But this, they actually just like have super AMD branding, which um, I guess is kind of cool if you're an AMD fan, but it's just kind of weird that you're seeing an OEM do that. But we'll show you that in a little bit. The other feature though is a little bit different and that's this little thing right here. What this is, is not just the normal fingerprint magnet, which is this glossy finish that's around a lot of this chassis, but this is actually a fingerprint reader. So if you just wanna have a biometric, so like you're doing Windows Hello and doing your sign-in, you can literally just go, you tap it like this, and you're getting into a system. It actually works pretty darn well. I was pretty surprised that it worked better than I thought it was going to and in a relatively low cost device. The one thing I did not like about it was that I was a moron basically and I set up Windows 11 Hello using the biometric thing because I was like, oh, that's such a cool feature. It has it, I have to go use it. But I had it up on my next to my TV and then I realized that when I wanted to sign in, that meant that I could, well, I mean, I could go to alternative options and my password in, but the bigger option was pretty much I would st have to stand up, hit the biometric lock, and then I realized that that, that was dumb. So uh, I didn't actually end up using that a lot, but it did work when I did. Okay, and just another kind of interesting thing is on the bottom of this unit, you're gonna see that it has some kind of interesting instructions. This is not just kind of little font saying all of the, you know, whatever certifications this, this box needs, but it tells you things like how to get in the BIOS and also how to go and set this to either performance mode, auto, balanced, all that kind of stuff in the AMD CBS menu, which is, Kind of interesting. I don't really know why um, you know you'd put it there. Maybe people don't use the internet, and it's nice to have things like how to switch your power settings. I guess there maybe. And again, you're going to see that we have a Ryzen 9 sticker and a Radeon sticker because you need to know that this is all an AMD powered system. Also fun. It says it's model GTR here, and it says GTR 5A on the little you know sticker that tells the serial number and stuff like that. But then again, when you look on this side or you look on this side, it says it's the GR9. Okay, now let's get inside the system and I'm gonna show you another kind of little fun feature, but it's this little tiny B-Link tab right here. You're gonna see this thing and you're like, huh, why Why does this have this like little, little rubber thing? And the reason is that after you remove the screws, which you already did, uh, you actually can use this little thing and you can pop off the top. Now, when we pop off the top, you're gonna to see inside the system, looking inside the system, you're gonna see that we have a nice little layout and this is actually super easy to go service. Now the CPU is on the other side of this and there's like a dual fan setup or something that is actually cooling that whole thing with all these heat sinks and what have you but on the main side where you want to actually go service stuff that's here and what we see is that this is actually super easy to service you just do the the four screws you get inside and once you're in there there are a couple of options that you can actually add to the system the first one we'll go over is just the fact that there is a SATA connector that it sits you know and it's attached to the bottom lid of the system and what that basically lets you do is put a two and a half inch drive most likely you're going to put an SSD there but you can actually go put that in and there's a little sleeve that holds it in place and in theory helps the thermals, but I don't know how much it really does that, but maybe it does. Now let's stick on that storage path. And specifically what you're gonna see here is that we have the Kingston NV1 NVMe SSD. We're gonna get to the performance of that in our performance section, but it is nice the fact that they're actually using a name brand SSD. Now Kingston is probably not the brand that you know, we would consider like the highest performing brand and this is not a PCIe Gen 4 SSD or anything like that, but a lot of the systems that we purchase from places like AliExpress come with some very questionable uh, SSDs that uh, are pretty, are actually kind of known to fail after some time at a little bit higher clip. And so having something that's from a name brand, I think it's actually something that's really nice that B-Link is doing here. The same thing actually carries on to the memory where we have two crucial memory. So these are, you know, Micron has a brand Crucial, which is really kind of more their consumer brand. And you get two SODIMs there and each of these are 16 gigabytes we get a total of 32 gigabytes in the system, which is absolutely great. I think that's a really good balance for this eight core processor. Getting 32 gigs is awesome. Now, one other thing that you do get is you get the option that if you want to, there's a second M.2 slot, which is a SATA slot. It's labeled SATA. Um, we didn't actually use it, but you do have a second internal M.2 slot if you want something like that. And next, let's talk about that networking and specifically the wireless networking. This uses the same MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E solution that we've seen previously, like on the Minis Forms HX90 
This is one where we actually, you know, it's a nice feature. We get, instead of Wi-Fi 6, you get Wi-Fi 6E. It's not necessarily like, you know, the, the newer Intel models or something like that. So it is definitely a, um, you know, in, Intel in the wireless, like these little M.2 wireless cards, by the way, it has, I don't know what it's like, 80, 90%, some kind of crazy market share. So any other solution than that um, is a much smaller solution in terms of things like driver support and things getting fixed and all that kind of stuff. So I tend to always say, tell people that like, I prefer the Intel solutions because of that. But on the other hand, you do get a Wi-Fi 6E and this thing came with Windows. So I actually think that, you know, having a solution that works under Windows, fine. I think that for a lot of people, that's gonna be a home run. And just on that note, something that was kind of weird is that this doesn't have like a Windows sticker on it, but we did get a Windows, I think it was 10 Pro uh, license and it worked. And then we were even able to upgrade it to Windows 11 Pro. That all worked uh, perfectly. So I guess it's valid license, but I do like the fact that the system came with it. So it's not something you have to go and pay for to go and upgrade or, you know, add on later if you want Windows. If you do want to go put Linux on it, you can do that. But on the other hand, it is nice to always have that Windows license just because frankly, it's such a pain to go get them. Now, the other thing is on the other side of this, which is the processor. The processor is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX, which is an eight core 16 thread processor in a little tiny system like this. Absolutely absolutely awesome. But hey, why just talk about the processor? Let's talk a little bit about performance first. Now, in terms of performance, this processor, frankly, the eight core 16 threads, it's a, you know, newer Zen architecture. I mean, this is absolutely a great processor. It's not necessarily as fast as when we see things like the 65 watt AMD, uh, you know, Ryzen Pro se series systems. Like, so if we are looking at the AMD systems from like HP or Lenovo, you do actually get more performance from the higher wattage just because you get a little more TDP. You actually don't necessarily get that much more than the 35 watt systems, so, but you do get a little bump for having the 45 watt. Overall though, I think that the performance of these is great. And frankly, um, you know, compared to some of the older Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes, these things are just way faster. I mean, this is a very legitimate processor. So a lot of people ask about two applications. They ask about gaming and video editing. Um, I'm just kind of give you some thoughts on that. First off on the gaming side, I, I tried this again with Steam uh, and, you know, frankly, if you are streaming, like, you know, if you, if you have another PC that has like a big GPU and you're streaming high quality games, um, I, th I think that actually looks really good on this. And that's something I really like. And even doing over Wi-Fi with that Wi-Fi 6E, you actually have enough performance that, you know, if your APs can handle it and the rest of your network can handle it, I think it looks great. Two and a half gig Ethernet, all that stuff is absolutely great for doing the in-home streaming. So if you want to do something like that and hook it up to a TV, I think it looks great. For things like video editing, personally, um, you know, can you do it? Yes. It's just like if you had a Ryzen 9 5900, HX laptop. So it's not not necessarily, I would say, a super great experience. I still think that, you know, my preferred setup and what I use is I still use an NVIDIA GPU for Adobe Premiere. And if I'm not using that, I'm on the road using my MacBook, which has a lot of the accelerators, which is absolutely by far the best solution, the M1 Silicon. And I don't I haven't tried the M2 yet, but I assume that's gonna be good as well. But, you know, the Apple Silicon with the accelerators that actually do a lot of that offloading, I think are actually great for video editing. This is probably not necessarily at that tier because you just kind of have the AMD GPU. Still, can you do it? Yes, and you do have an eight-core processor, so it's not going to be terrible, but it's definitely not going to be, you know, a top-tier experience. So if you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to buy this PC and everything's going to be like super silky smooth if I go do like 4K 60 or like 8K 30 or something like that, you're definitely definitely not going to have that great of an experience just because you need the hardware accelerators really for that. In terms of the SSD performance, we mentioned that we're going to look at the Kingston NV1 SSD, and the performance was actually pretty good. Now, this is not necessarily the maximum that you would get if you did see like, you know, the maximum for PCIe Gen 3 by 4 SSD. But on the other hand, we did get pretty reasonable speeds and, you know, it's much faster than having a SATA SSD. So I think that that's good. Now, if you do want the maximum storage, like if you just, all you care about is storage performance, I don't think you get this. I will go get a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD because they are much faster. I mean, you can get, you know, sequential read speeds that are, you know, seven gigabytes a second ish. Uh, you know, that's just way faster than this. So again, I think this is good. It's not necessarily top tier, but again, you know, the system is small. I mean, this is not a big system at all. Okay, so let's talk about power consumption and noise. So before I plug this in, because I don't want to ruin the audio before this, but I just want to go point out the fact that this system in terms of overall power consumption, if it is sitting at idle, you're going to see idle uh, really like in that like seven, six, seven watt range is actually really good. Sometimes you see like 10 watts. So while idle on this is not too high, 
The other side of it is really, well, how much power does it actually use? So when you're just kind of in the Windows desktop and I'm just kind of like browsing the, the you know internet or something like that, you'll see something like I get like 35, maybe 45 watts, like kind of in that range is pretty common. You can get up to like 80 watts and something like that, no problem. You do get a 90 watt power brick, so if you do need to replace it, you can. You're probably not gonna be running this thing over PoE with like a PoE split or something like that just because it uses a little bit too much power for that. All right, so let's plug this thing in and get it going so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, and so while we do this, I wanna actually show you and just kind of look right here at the label and hopefully hopefully this is gonna show up. Maybe you can even hear this thing start up. But if you didn't notice, this thing actually light, lit up right here. So it's lighting up the AMD logo, but the B-Link logo is not lit up. It's just, I don't know why, I just think that's so fun. Okay, so let's do a couple noise things here. Just to kind of give you guys an idea, the microphone is right here. And so I'm gonna hold this all the way up there. And this is kind of what the startup sound sounds like. Okay, now this thing is fully booted into the Windows desktop. I actually am RDPing into it and there's nothing open right now. Okay, now let's listen to idle. This is uh, fully booted into the Windows desktop. Here's idle. And this honestly, like if it's, if it's about that far away, like arm's length away, it's basically pretty, not necessarily silent at idle, but it's pretty darn quiet. But it definitely gets a lot louder when you go and push the thing. So let's go run some benchmarks and show you that. Okay, I just stuck Geekbench 5 Pro and that's actually starting right now on this. And you can just kind of hear, I'll let you guys hear this. I think we're still on the single thread side, but. Usually gets a little louder a little bit later. Okay, so Geekbench is running. You can kind of hear it. It's definitely a little directional in terms of the noise. So overall, it's not definitely not the loudest system, but on the other hand, it definitely makes some noise. So if you're expecting like a completely silent system, this is not it. It's not too bad. Uh, and overall, you know, I think the performance is pretty good. And I would say this is a good system in terms of overall, just what it offers. But with all these systems, I always love to have a key lessons learned. And this one is actually gonna be a little bit different. This system, at first, it just sat in a box and I didn't actually even open it because I was so busy, I just didn't have time to go open. I started traveling. But during May, I actually had pulled this out of the box and I realized it was so small, it actually fit in my camera bag. And just to kind of give you guys some sense of scale, I know it's not great, but this is like a Canon R5 with a 28 to 70 and a battery grip on it. And this is how big the PC is. Um, and you can kind of see that these things are not necessarily like, like this is way smaller, right? And it's also, it's also way lighter. So this little system has actually been to four countries now with me. It's been to Spain, Germany, it's been to uh, Canada, and also all over the US. It's been as far as California, Texas. On the other side, it's been all the way to New York City. And that's actually why I ended up pulling it out just waiting for a flight in the Newark airport. And it just kind of made a cool little photo of it because it's so small that it actually just fits in my backpack. So for me personally, I, I tend to be more of, I guess, a power user. I use like a Threadripper Pro and the MacBook Pro and all that kind of stuff. So I tend to use pretty high-end compute platforms. But if you a little platform, I actually love this thing. And I have thrown this next to a TV in the bar. And I think that this is absolutely a great little system to just have, connect a keyboard, a wireless keyboard and mouse to, and you're basically all set up and ready to go. And for a lot of folks that are out there and you know watching STH, I mean, STH, we tend to have an older audience and all that kind of stuff, just because we tend to you know cover not just these, but also kind of really high-end servers and stuff like that. For that audience, I think that these kind of make a lot of sense for folks that have to go do like demos on the road and stuff. Having a little platform like this that is AMD based, that has the two, two and a half gig network, you know, ports as well as the Wi-Fi, has all that kind of stuff, allows you to kind of do some pretty darn cool things in terms of being able to go set up like demos that you can actually just go put in a suitcase. I mean, this takes up not a lot of space. And the 90 watt power supply that it comes with is big, but it's something that you can always tuck away in like a carry-on or something like that. Now the system is definitely not perfect. I think that for one, you know, you can have higher speed USB ports. I also think that frankly, I, I don't necessarily know if I love the Ryzen 9 5900HX. Like if, if you gave me like a, maybe one or two steps below that, that was still eight cores and maybe used a little less power, was a little bit quieter. I think actually I would prefer that. I also would love to have had PCIe Gen 4, but you know, I know that there's platform things and you know, reasons that you can't have it in here, but still I would have just, something in the future I'd like to have would be PCIe Gen 4 and something like this. Overall though, this is a system that I really like. And I think this is probably 
probably my favorite mini PC that we've actually done in terms of like kind of like the higher end ones. I think, you know, we talk about the lower end like router appliances. I think that's a different category and the tiny mini micro nodes, those are a different category. But I think for the these kind of like higher end mini PCs, I think this is actually a great little system. But I'd love to hear what you think about it. So feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications. We have a ton of cool content coming out in the next month or two. So definitely subscribe because you're not gonna wanna miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.